Hi, I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on providing solutions to questions from previous test papers of Cambridge International Examination. In this video, we'll take up examples related to trigonometric functions. In case you have any doubts or questions, you can always send me an email on the address given here. I'll be more than happy to provide you with suggestions. Here is a very interesting question which had been there in a couple of years back. The question here is, the function f is defined by f of x equals to 3 tan half x minus 2 for x greater than or equal to minus pi by 2 and x is less than or equal to pi by 2. Three parts of this question are, solve the equation fx plus 4 equals to 0, find the expression for f inverse and domain of f inverse, sketch the function f and its inverse. All right. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. So let's begin with the very first part, which is f of x plus 4 equal to 0. So we are given f of x as equal to 3 times tan of half x minus 2. And we need to find solution in the domain when x is between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So let's try to understand this domain itself. Now colored pens and inks I'm only using for explanation part, right? In the test, you have to provide solution in black ink. So when we say minus pi by 2, that means in this direction. And when we say plus pi by 2 means in this. So we need to find solution in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 4 correct that is the idea for x correct okay now let's analyze it further equation to be solved is f of x plus 4 equals to 0 right so we are given f of x plus 4 equals to 0 that means we have to add here 4 correct so that is 3 times tan of half of x minus 2. So if I add 4 to this, I should be getting 0. That's the whole idea, right? So let's try to solve it. Taking numbers to this side, this is uh, plus 2, we get minus 2 equals to 3 times tan of half x, correct? Or we get minus 2 over 3 equals to tan of half x. Now, it is kind of important to understand that we are given this domain for x, but here we have half x, right? So, that means what? Half of x should be within what interval? We'll multiply both by half, so we have minus pi by 4 to plus pi by 4. Is that clear, right? So, we are looking for a solution which is for half x, let's call this as theta, within this interval, within this interval, correct? That is clear, right? Half of x, that is what we are looking for. So, so what we will now do is, we can say that tan theta, so we are writing theta instead of half x is equal to minus 2 over 3, right? So, minus 2 over 3 means we are looking for solution in quadrant 4, correct? So, we can find alpha and then we know the negative value, right? So, let's do it. So, we get theta as equal to tan inverse of a minus 2 over 3, right? You could do this. Uh, you may or may not get the exact answer. Sometimes it may give you quadrant in quadrant 2, right? So, let's see what we get. So, we get shift tan inverse negative 2 divided by 3 within brackets and gives you minus 33.69. That's fair enough. So, so we get this negative value minus, which is less than 45, correct? So, that is what you get. But we need to write answer in 
radians right so I need to convert my calculator to radians so we'll shift more and change this to radians which is 4 and now we'll again find this answer which is shift tan inverse minus 2 divided by 3 bracket close equals 2 so now we get answer which is minus 0 0.5880 now this is in radians, correct? Minus 0 0.5880, that is the angle theta. However, in our question it was tan of half x, correct? So theta for us is half x. So we can write this as half of x is equal to minus 0 0.5880. So x is equal to minus 0 0.5880 times 2. So we'll multiply this by 2 now. So it gives you as equal to minus 1.176. Correct. So this answer of minus 1.176, if we round to one decimal place, we get this approximately as minus 1.2 radians. Correct. So that becomes the solution to the given question, rounded to one decimal place, right? Rounded to one decimal place. So that is how we can do part one. And now let's look into part B, which is find the expression for F inverse and domain of F inverse, could it? Okay. So we can actually tackle domain first. We have the function f of x as equal to 3 tan half x minus 2, right? We are given domain of this function. The domain is that x is between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, correct? Now, this is the domain. So to find the range, we know tan is always an increasing function, right? So important thing here to notice that tan theta, or you can say tan half x in this case, is an increasing function, right? It is always increasing. That is the property of tan, right? Increasing function. So that means these limits will give us the minimum and the maximum value. Okay? So we can find the value for the function at minus pi by 2. So minus pi by 2 will give us 3 times tan of, we get here, minus. So if I substitute pi by 2, I get pi by 4 here, correct? Minus 2. Uh, tan pi by 4, as you know, is 1. Minus pi by 4 is minus 1. So we get minus 3 minus 2. That gives you minus 5. And the value of the function at uh, pi by 2 is going to be 3 tan pi by 4. So when you substitute pi by 2, divide by 2 is there. So in that case, we get plus 1. So we get 3 minus 2, which is one correct so so that is the range of this function so we can say range of f of x is that y value is between these two limits which is minus 5 and 1 correct so from here we know domain of f inverse right therefore domain of f inverse is basically y belongs to real numbers where I mean domain is x right sorry x belongs to real number where x is between minus 5 to 1 clear because domain and range swaps correct so the reason is um, domain of f inverse is range of f of x clear so that's very important thing which you should remember and that gives you the solution for one of our parts which is this okay. 
Now, let's also find the expression for f inverse, right? So let's do that. So finding f inverse means we just swap this and rewrite our equation. So, so we could write for inverse, we will swap x and y, correct? So once you do that, uh, we get x equals to 3 times 10 of y by 2 minus 2, correct? So we need to isolate y now, so which gives us x plus 2 divided by 3 is equal to 10 of y by 2, right? So we can write it on this side. Tan inverse, let's write this here. Tan inverse of x plus 2 over 3 is y by 2. And now we can write here y equals to. So we get y equals to 2 times tan inverse of x plus 2 over 3 or f inverse of x is basically 2 times tan inverse of x plus 2 over 3. Clear? So that is how we can get the inverse of this particular function. Clear? Okay, so now the third part is to sketch the function f and its inverse. Okay, so we've done two parts. Now, to sketch this function, I would like you to pause the video, sketch it, and then look into my suggestions. We have already found two points here, right? So we'll find one more. What is f of 0? So let's say f of 0 is what? So when substituting 0 here, we get 3 tan 0, which is 0. f of 0 is minus 2, right? So I'll just make a small sketch here. Uh, to show you the the sketch, but I'll prefer that you do it on a better graph paper, okay? So whenever we are trying to find the graph of inverse, we could actually sketch the graph of the function and then we could reflect it on the line y equals to x. Is that clear to you, right? Okay, so we'll begin with the the graph of the function itself, uh, which is tan, right? So, uh, and we have this domain from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 for the given function. So we know this point at minus pi by 2, the point is minus 5. So one of the coordinates are minus pi by 2. So what does minus pi by 2 means or pi by 2 means? So uh, shift pi divided by 2 basically uh, in numbers is 1.57, right? So, so we have a point here, which is, uh, let me write down minus. Uh, let me shift this page a bit. Okay. Okay. So, so we have x value of minus pi by 2. So, let's say we take this value as minus pi by 2, right? So, when I say minus pi by 2, it is 1.5. So, so let us say if this is 1 and this is this is minus 1, this is minus 2, somewhere there in between, correct? That's what we mean. So minus pi by 2, the value of the function is minus 5. So let's use this point as minus 5, correct? At 0, it is minus 2. So let's say at 0, it is minus 2, somewhere here. And then we know at pi by 2, it is 1. So pi by 2, we have a value which is, let's say, 1, kind of here, okay? So that means we could actually draw a tangent curve, which is kind of like this. Right. So that's the shape of the tangent curve. I've just squeezed in this portion since we didn't want to go so much down. So that becomes f of x for us. Is that clear to you? Right. Now, let's sketch f inverse. So this point, which is at, at minus 2, 0, will now be at 0 minus 2. So on the inverse, this point will be right there, correct? Well, the diagram here is not at all to the scale, but we'll go with the points. 
Now this point on f of x is at minus pi by 2 minus 5. So on the inverse, it will be on minus 5 minus pi by 2. So, so let's say, I mean, uh, let's say this point here is minus 5 minus pi by 2. Is it okay? We're just assuming this to be that point, correct? So this will be the reflection of that on this line, right? And then we have minus 2, 0 as the other point on our inverse function. And this point here is at uh, pi by 2, 1, right? So this is at pi by 2, 1. So this will be reflected and become 1 pi by 2. So, so at 1, we expect the value of pi by 2, right? So let's say this point is 1 pi by 2. Is it clear? So joining these points, we get our inverse function, okay? So, so the inverse function, let me just push this, will be, so we are maintaining the shape of the graph, which will be kind of like this, okay? So that will be the inverse function. So when you make to the scale, this will be uh, y equals to x, will be line of symmetry between these two. Is that clear to you, right? So. Uh, so take care while uh, drawing these curves, however the points are absolutely correct, they should help you to get the exact graph. I hope that makes sense. Feel free to write your comments, share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that would be great. And once again, if you have any doubts, you can always email me on the address given here. Thanks for watching and all the best.